Welcome back to Andy Cooks, the show where me, Andy, professional chef for over 20 years, brings you along on my journey of becoming a better home cook. And today we're gonna to talk about one of my more recent viral videos, the French onion soup. Which at the time of recording this has almost 28 million views, which is just mind blowing. Um, it's probably got something to do with the fact that it's cold here in Australia at the moment. And I guess everyone's after something nice and warming. So anyway, let's get stuck into it. And surprise, surprise, we had onions and a lot of them. Before I run through these ingredients, please click that like button, it helps me out heaps, and subscribe if you're not. All right, let's get into it. So this is what you're gonna to need to make the soup. Uh, it's pretty simple, really. It's kind of largely a uh, technique-based soup. Um, nothing kind of too crazy, nothing you shouldn't be able to find. A couple of interesting ingredients that I personally put in that um, some people might be offended by, but oh well. So onions, so you just want, you know, you see standard brown onions, uh, that's two kilos in total there. You want about 1.25 kilo of raw sliced onion. Uh, don't be too particular whether that's a little above or below, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, then to flavor those, you're gonna need a couple of bay leaves. Don't skip this. Uh, I saw a couple of people in the comments being like, oh, when do you ever notice when a bay leaf's not put in? And that, that's kind of one of the differences between a home cook and a chef, I think, is that we don't skip these steps. Uh, you're gonna need some stock, some, some beef stock. Um, Make your own if you've got time. If not, just buy some store-bought stuff. Um, this stuff from Maggie Bear is pretty good. So, some brandy uh, is, is a pretty classic addition to it. Again, if you've got whiskey at home or something else, some, another kind of liquor, uh, another kind of spirit, you can probably just change that out. Don't feel like you need to rush off and get brandy. Sherry also works really well. Uh, and if all else fails, some dry white wine. A little bit of flour, salt and pepper to taste, butter and olive oil. Uh, you're going to need a French stick or some bread, preferably a couple of days old, makes better croutons for the top. Some cheese, um, I'm a big fan of Gruyere, I think the, the nuttiness works really well with the soup, but um, a nice strong cheddar, um, some raclette, uh, any, any good melting cheese with a decent amount of flavour will work really well. And then these two here, which uh, I kind of add in, uh, and some people get offended by, but whatever. Maggi seasoning, this stuff's pretty much liquid MSG. Don't be scared of it, it's delicious. Um, and you, you, know, you don't add enough of it that you can taste it. You're just adding like another layer of umami to it. And Lee and Perry, well it doesn't need to be Lee and Perry, but Worcestershire sauce. I'm not brand focused on Worcestershire sauce, but it, again, uh, adds a great depth of flavor and some great umami in there. So, unsurprisingly, first things first, I need to get these onions cut. All right, just quickly before I get stuck into the into these onions and go into my own world for a minute while I cut them. Top and tail off, in half, so you're through the core. If you can see that, you don't want that core piece in there, that really woody bit. So just cut that piece out like that, and then you're gonna cut it this way, kind of with the grain. And it doesn't need to be kind of razor thin. You do kind of want some texture to it at the end. Yeah, like that size, I think is pretty, pretty bang on. All right, time to start crying. Oh. Doesn't matter how many onions, how many years you've been cutting onions. I still get you. The only trick is to have a knife as sharp as you can. Anyway, that's probably about 1.5 kilo, but hey, let's cook it. All right, so in a large kind of heavy base pot, like a Dutch oven, these work really well. Um, you do want to have the lid for it though. I'm gonna put a couple of tablespoons of butter, good glug of extra virgin olive oil. So one of the key rules when you're using cast iron is that you make sure it's hot before you start putting stuff in it. If you don't, stuff will stick. So this step of caramelizing the onions is critical to get right, and it takes time. Um, now, some people in the comments have been like, oh, that takes four hours. Uh, I don't think it takes four hours. I think you can get this done really well in one hour. Um, but it does take time and you can't stray too far. Don't leave this and walk away too far uh, or you will burn them. It's been about 10 minutes, see where we're at. So they've already come down by half. And as you can see, no color yet. And the reason this speeds up the process with the lid on uh, is basically the steam coming off the onions hits the lid 
falls back down as moisture and stops the onions catching on the bottom. And then there's just that whole kind of convection process where that kind of keeps happening. So I'm just going to give these a stir just to get the ones off the bottom. They're probably slightly more soft. And we'll put that lid back on for another 10 minutes. Another hot tip. When you're doing stuff like this, scrape down your sides. Make sure there's nothing up the sides because that stuff will catch and burn. 10 more minutes. All right, 10 more minutes. We're now at the point where we need to lift that lid off because when I open that, I can see the moisture coming up. So there's just so much moisture coming out of those now that we need that moisture to go somewhere. So at this point, we just need to hover around this pot for as long as it takes to get incredible color on these onions and we seem to keep stirring them and just being really careful so um, I've got chef hands that are pretty you can handle kind of nuclear heat pretty well uh, this steam is really hot so trust me when I say if I was to avoid any kind of burn it would be a steam burn steam burns suck they hurt they hurt real bad uh, and I learned that working in uh, Chinese restaurants where they have these massive big dim sum steamers and you do not want to get your hand in front of one of those. So you can actually see it now, it's already starting to change colour which is fantastic. Alright, croutons. Pretty simple. Bread knife now. I don't, some people cut them on an angle. I just cut them straight for this dish. Um, I find you can get more in your bowl with, uh, we can cover more surface area with the rounds than you can with the longs. That personal preference. Again, you probably want a day old baguette. This is fresh, so it's really hard to cut. But you don't want super thin croutons. That's pretty good, you want about that thick. Um, and usually go for three per person. This amount of soup will kind of feed, you know, four to six adults pretty comfortably. And it's one of the soups my mum used to make growing up. She had three soups in her repertoire. She had French onion, oxtail soup, which is also delicious. I'll have to do a video on that one day. And pumpkin soup. I'm actually gonna make pumpkin soup next weekend. So, so lay these flat on a tray. I guess I should do it somewhere where you can see it. There we go, in an oven, 180 degrees. So, little mini competition time. I'm looking at getting some of these dough cutters made up as merch. I think you all know I'm a pretty big fan of the old dough cutter. So I've got a few samples. Uh, I want to test them out, make sure they actually survive. Um, one of my firm beliefs about home cooking equipment or kitchen tools is that they have to be dishwasher safe. So I want to run this through the dishwasher a hundred times and all that before I go ahead and order a bunch. So comment below if you would, if you would actually buy one of these for a start. And, um, and I'll choose one person that comments below, um, yes, yeah, so I'd buy this. Uh, and I'll send them out and I'll get you to test it and we'll just stay in communication and I'd love to kind of hear what your experiences with it um, over the next on a few weeks once you've got it before I order a whole bunch. So yeah, Andy Cook's dough cutter. Would you buy it? Let me know. All right, so we're a little over halfway caramelizing our onions properly. Oh, this garlic's strong. And we can start flavoring them. Three cloves of garlic. You don't want too much, I'm a big garlic fan, don't get me wrong, I love garlic, but called onion soup, not garlic soup. I think there is a, a garlic soup out there. I think it might be Asian though, to be honest. Anyway, three cloves of garlic, crushed up uh, and nice and fine. And don't be afraid to turn the heat down when stuff does start happening quickly. But you can see we've got great color. Back to the garlic. So, smash a rooney, run your knife through it a bunch of times. Fine. Up. And that goes. And the reason we don't need the garlic at the start is you just completely lose all that garlic flavour. Not that we want a lot of it. And at this point, we can also add our bay leaves. Croutons of nice black colour. Put these over. They don't need much longer, another five minutes maybe. Two tablespoons of flour. This is a, an optional step if you are. Uh, Gluten intolerant, leave the step out. But it just helps to give a little bit more body to the soup. You want to cook that flour out. And the first step here is we're going to deglaze this pan with our brandy. Once that's reduced, we'll add our stock. 
and then we can season it up. And you can see, you know, how much onion we have now from where we started. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. So that flour is sufficiently cooked, we're going to add our brandy. You don't need heaps of this, just about that much. So, what that brandy will do is also pick up all that fawn off the bottom of the pan. So, I've scored for one litre. By all means, you can stretch this out and put in another half a litre if you wanted to. But I like lots of onions in my soup. Now, all we're doing at this stage, we, don't, we shouldn't need to reduce the stock at all. We're just making sure we've got all that lovely caramelised stuff off the bottom and the sides of the pan. And then we're going to, once it's come up to a boil, we're going to check for seasoning. Um, and we're going to season it with our Liam Perry and our Maggi first, and then we'll finish it with salt. Seasoning time. So that's six dashes. I reckon that'll be enough. Ten of Liam Perry. I reckon Liam Perry is the white person version of fish sauce. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's got anchovies in it as well. Let's see, what does it have in it? Maybe I should try and make my own Worcestershire sauce. Comment below if you think I should make my own Worcestershire sauce. Malt vinegar, spirit vinegar, molasses, salt, sugar, anchovies. There you go. Tamarind, onion, garlic, spice and flavors. Wow, it's seriously Asian inspired then. So, you know, fish, tamarind and spices are the main flavor ingredients. Hectic. Yo, Liam Perry, let me know if I can come visit your factory. Make my own. Let's taste this now. Oh. Delicious. Doesn't have a little bit of salt still. Not much though. Good few grounds of pepper. All right, we're almost done. Final stretch. We're just going to get our cheese graters and ready. Let's get some soup in here. Another hot tip. We'll just soup on a tray with a paper towel on the bottom. Way I won't move around. It's much easier to get that in and out of the oven than soup, cheese, croutons, more cheese. So I've got the oven set to grill now. We want to get nice melty cheese on the top. This is what we're looking for. Melty cheese. All gooey. I love this soup. So good. So comforting. And I love when you get a piece of bread that's like half soggy, half crunchy. If that makes sense. So good. So well balanced. Just a few ingredients. Bit of time and care. Doesn't get much better than this on a cold winter's day. Anyway, legends, as always, Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please click me a like if you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next Sunday for another recipe. Peace.